Last night on this program, we heard from two attorneys with expertise in the military justice system about new changes the Biden administration has made to how the Department of Defense deals with sexual abuse and harassment in the ranks. Tonight, we hear from the White House in response. Here again is Laura Barone Lopez. An executive order signed by President Biden last week makes the largest changes to the military justice system since its creation in the 1950s. It transfers authority over certain offenses from commanders to a new team of independent prosecutors called the Special Trial Council. Those prosecutors, not commanders, will now decide whether to bring charges in cases of sexual assault, rape, murder, and other offenses. Some military legal experts NewsHour spoke to have called the changes a movement in the right direction, but see room for improvement. To discuss the new action by the president, we're joined by retired Navy Admiral John Kirby, spokesman for the White House National Security Council. Admiral Kirby, thank you so much for joining us. You've called this new executive order, these changes, a monumental step. Why is that? Well, it's historic, quite frankly, Laura. I mean, when you think about uh, the most significant change since the Uniform Code of Military Justice was put in place in 1950, uh, and to take a whole set of covered crimes, you mentioned a few of them, sexual assault, rape, murder, as well as others, and remove them from the commanding officer, from the chain of command, and put them under special trial counsel, that has just never been done before. Uh, so it is a monumental step. Uh, it's historic. Uh, and uh, we certainly uh, believe that it will uh, help us deal better with these sorts of crimes to proper, more properly investigate them, uh, more properly prosecute them. And just as critically, in the case of sexual assault specifically, help restore some confidence in the judicial system by members of the military, particularly uh, women service members. We spoke to a number of former military lawyers who pointed to three areas that they found concerning in the language of the executive order in the annexes uh, that they say still leave some authority under commanders. The executive order states that commanders will select the jury pool and provide that to the judge, which is then randomly selected. And it also has specific language on pretrial confinement authority. It states, who may direct release from confinement? Any commander of a confinee may direct release from pretrial confinement. So that language seems to still leave some authority with commanders. What's your response to that? So let me take each in turn, if I might, um, on the jury selection. Uh, it is written into law, by statute, uh, that a commander selects the members of a court of a, of a court martial, a panel, uh, and that can't be solved. That can't be solved by a, an executive order because it's law. So that, there would have to be legislation to change that. On how the process will work, uh, commanders will certainly have the ability to to help provide context on the, the availability of members uh, to serve. Uh, but by the randomization that has been added into this, they don't they won't get uh, veto authority. They won't get to they won't get to to pre-select uh, members in that regard because of this randomization uh, factor that's been added into the EO, which will give uh, the system a lot more flexibility. And then on your pretrial confinement question, um, it's it's very specifically designed this EO uh, to make it clear uh, that while well, yes, commanders can assign uh, pretrial confinement. They, they have that authority. They already had it before that. Um, uh, and that they will have the ability, uh, if for operational readiness concerns or other concerns, uh, to, uh, to want to remove a member from pretrial confinement, that the special trial counsel can override that decision by a commanding officer and demand, if there is justification for it, demand that the accused stay in pretrial confinement. So the special trial counsel can, 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 can come in over the top uh, of a commander uh, and demand that an accused stay in pretrial confinement. Again, they have to be able to justify it uh, in, in terms of the case, like in terms of maybe the intimidation of witnesses, uh, but there is an override capability built into this EO. That's interesting, because we didn't see the specific override language, but is there override language for this other part of the executive order that I want to ask you about? It, it's on another potential area where commanders have some authority still, on national security matters. It says, quote, if a commander believes 
that the trial would be detrimental to the prosecution of war or harmful to national security, the matter shall be forwarded to the secretary concerned for action. So they could forward it on to the secretary and essentially, potentially, halt the trial. Right. I mean, the irony here with this language and the why, why it's fresh language is it's actually making it more restrictive for commanders. It's actually making it harder for them uh, to stop a prosecution or an investigation going forward, because now they have to make a, a, a formal justification based on national security needs. Now, look, we're the United States military. The military fights wars. The military defends the country. Uh, so obviously, we want to hear a commander out if he has national security concerns. But the bar's pretty high. Uh, and before, there was no stipulation that a he had to claim national security. He or she had to claim national security matters as a reason uh, for uh, uh, for involving uh, itself in slowing down or curtailing or stopping an investigation or prosecution. And b that now that commander has to go has to petition the service. Secretary, the civilian secretary of the Army or Air Force or uh, or Navy, uh, in order to make that case. So the provision, actually as written, makes it more restrictive and places an additional burden on commanders that that wasn't there before. Admiral, does the president think that uh, more offenses, more criminal offenses, should be moved from under the commander's chain of command? over to this new special trial counsel. I know that there's many more offenses than the ones that we have talked about, including kidnapping, including uh, retaliation, including stalking, that have been moved over to the special trial counsel, but not right. all of them. So do you, th does the president think that ultimately Congress should change the law so that way all of the offenses could be moved over to independent prosecutors? The president believes it's, a, it's really important to focus on these covered crimes, and you mentioned a few others, and I thank you for that, uh, because they are so complicated and because they are often um, outside the realm of what a normal commander's experience would lend him or her uh, their ability uh, to, to investigate and to prosecute. And we really want to focus on executing to this executive order and implementing that. And look, as we go through this process, Laura, if we learn some things, and we might, and we might as we execute and implement this, if we learn some things that, that cause us to change our minds or to find new amendments or to, or to look at other articles that might, uh, that might apply, uh, we're certainly going to stay open-minded to that. But we really chose a set of covered crimes uh, that truly uh, are difficult for the normal commander to be able to investigate, adjudicate, and, and prosecute. Uh, because they're so complex, and that's what that's what we're really going to put our focus on uh, on these covered crimes for right now. And finally, Admiral, what has the response been like that the White House has heard from sexual assault survivors since the president signed this executive order? So we're hearing some very positive feedback uh, from from victims and from victims advocates, and and I'm glad you asked that question because we're focusing right now on the accountability measures, and that is very important. Uh, and covering these crimes outside the chain of command, uh, we believe again is historic and will have a huge effect on our ability to hold uh, properly accountable those who commit these crimes. Admiral John Kirby of the White House's National Security Council, thank you so much for your time and for answering our questions. My pleasure. Thank you.